happy Wednesday. Am I the only one who sometimes forgets the days? I'm pretty sure I'm not. So today we're going to be talking about death. Okay, I know it's a little bit morbid, but I think considering everything that's happening around the world, it's kind of a subject that we don't really want to gloss over. Um, and so I've actually had this planned for a while uh, because I was asked about this from the ladies of the, the Checkpoint podcast. And since one of the creators will be with us tomorrow, I figured, well, I might as well just talk about this as well. And then that way I can also introduce... Um, the podcast for those of you who haven't heard about it it's called the checkpoint podcast it is this podcast for made by two moms where they basically like just check in on each other every week and they share their experience and as well as experience of other moms around the world so we're gonna be with Anna tomorrow and she's gonna share with us her experience and how the podcast came to be and today we're gonna talk about death which was their second episode um, so for those of you who are watching for the very first time, welcome. I am Denise. I am a mom of two in Madrid and I am a parenting coach. So ever since they announced the schools would be closing, I've decided to go live every day just to share my experience as well as some tips for all the other parents who are going through the same thing. So, death. Uh, my question for you today is, has your child been asking about death? Let me know in the comments if you want to, and also the age of your child. Um, in my particular case, my daughter hasn't been asking about death. Um, it's just not a topic that she has brought up. But I know that there are other kids who... Who are concerned about it and considering that they will be allowed out next week exactly under what guidelines we don't know <laughs> but it might be also something that will come up so I figured you know this is something that parents should should know about uh, might be uncomfortable for us to talk about it that is totally understandable but that doesn't mean we shouldn't talk about it especially with our kids so some things I want to make when talking about death with your kids, first of all, is to follow their lead, right? That the, the point here that I'm kind of making is not for you, like after you watch this, to go up to your kid and be like, okay, people are dying. This is what you have to know. Like, no. <laughs> um, but if they do ask you questions, I just kind of want you to be prepared to know how to answer them. So yeah, so first of all, you don't have to bring it up if you know if they haven't expressed any interest there's no need to bring it up but if they do start asking you questions especially about death um, then follow their lead you can just ask them what do they know what do they think right um, so just see what it what exactly about death do they want to talk about and when you are talking about death, use clear, concrete language. So when you say, or when we say things like they fell asleep or we lost them, or I was talking to a friend the other day and he said that his uncle didn't make it and at first I was confused and then I was like, oh my God, shoot, you know? <laughs> so um, when we use those kinds of language, it really confuses them because they don't really understand what that means, especially when we say, they fell asleep, then the kids start thinking like, oh my God, you know, I'm going to sleep or you're going to sleep. And so it just creates a whole lot of confusion. So instead you can just use really clear language, just things like um, their body stopped functioning, uh, their body shut down, it stopped working. Choose whichever um, works for you. Just remember that you have to make it clear to them that their their bodies aren't working anymore and that yeah basically it's just really be really be clear and then when you do have this conversation adapt it to your child based on their age and their personality so you know your child best um and so you know what type of information you would be beneficial to them and what information might just scare them Right? And finally, reassure them that they are safe, especially now more than ever. 
you can tell them that, yeah, you know, there are these things happening outside, there are people dying, but um, we are doing the best we can to keep you safe. There are, there are people here who are doing everything they can to keep you safe. They're taking care of everyone else outside, that kind of thing. Just kind of like really reassure them that they are safe and they're healthy and that you are doing everything you can for it to stay that way. Um, telling stories, just like what Fazia mentioned as well, those type of healing stories, um, that could also be really reassuring to them and that's something else that you could use for this conversation. And when I say like this conversation, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's just one conversation and then you're done, right? It can be like multiple conversations over a span of the rest of your lives, basically. Um, but really what I want to share here is just kind of like the groundwork so that when they, when you do have these conversations, you feel prepared and you're able to impart like a sense of safety and confidence to your children when talking about this. So yeah, so for those of you who just are watching now, um, basically I said that when you're talking to your kids, about death, you have to, I suggest following their lead, right? Just answer the questions that they're asking. Use clear language. Do, don't use things like uh, they fell asleep for a very long time or um, we lost them, they didn't make it. You really have to make it clear to them that their body stopped functioning there. Maybe you can say they're no longer in pain. And also depending on your own particular religious beliefs, this is when you would tell them what happens to these bodies, right? Or what happens to the souls. Um, and then to adapt the conversation based on your child's age and personality. And finally, also always reassure them that they are that they are safe, right? This can be just through your words, your actions. Um, I mentioned storytelling. Another thing can also just be through play. Play can be very therapeutic. Actually, when it was like my daughter's birthday and she realized that she couldn't have a birthday party, we had like a game. She was the one who initiated this game where we were playing that it was her birthday and all her friends were in their houses. So it's just like a way for kids also to process their information. So that's something that could be helpful. Um, yeah, so I so aside from that, just to go really deeper into reassuring them that they are safe, so when, when you are talking to them, and this is again, not just like a single conversation, but in general also, really prioritize their, their feelings of, of safety, right? And help them understand their physical experience, like when they feel scared, when they feel worried, even, or even if, when they feel happy. Um, it's nice to ask them, how does your body feel? right? How does this kind of emotion feel in your body? What do you think your body is telling you? And this is a really good, um, this awareness, especially when they're young, is something that's really good to cultivate because then it also helps them when they're older to regulate themselves, right? To regulate um, their emotions because then they're, when they're more aware of what's happening in their body, then they'll be like, oh, my body is, I'm starting to feel really like stress here. Um, I'm feeling angry. And sometimes just having that awareness and acknowledging it in your body helps them to calm down. And another thing that I want to mention is to address the causes behind the behavior. So when your kid isn't really feeling safe, right, or when they're really worried about something, um, it's easy for, the, for us to see when they're like sad you know, they just don't really, maybe they don't really feel like talking to anyone and they're just in their room. Um, that's easy for us to kind of like take care of them in that way. But sometimes when kids aren't feeling safe, they lash out, right? They can get, they, they get more irritable, irritable. Yeah, that's a word. Uh, they're angry. Um, so the, the idea of the iceberg really helps. And for me, I will share the picture in the comments. So basically the idea is that um, all of us humans, not just our kids, but we are an, an iceberg, right? Um, with the thing that the part that you can see is our behavior, right? But what, what you don't see underneath the iceberg are all the reasons for our behavior. So we might see an angry child and think, I don't know, he's, he's so disobedient, 
right? When really what's happening is that he's processing all of these things under that we don't see. It could be maybe that he feels afraid, maybe he had a nightmare, maybe there are all these emotions that he's feeling and he just doesn't know what to do with them, right? It could also be that he's just like dev not developmentally ready for whatever it is that you were asking from him in the moment. Um, so yeah, so just kind of having that mindset when you are seeing kids, especially when their behavior is difficult, it really helps to see that it's not, the behavior isn't the problem, really, there are so many other things underneath that's going on. In my case, I always try to think of behavior as communication, like what is my child's behavior trying to tell me, and not see it as something that needs to be corrected. Um, another thing that I put here was that it really helps just for both kids and parents to practice mindfulness skills. Just like learning how to be present in the moment is a way to um, be less stressed, I guess, and just like really focus on what it is that we have right now. And another thing that I put, the last thing that I'm going to share today is to develop new ways to cope. So when you see that your kid is feeling stressed or or anxious and you know maybe he's really concerned about death and he's unable to get out of this cloud you know you can simply have a problem solving conversation with him and you can say like okay it looks it seems to me that you feel like this right or and then you can say well i'm i'm concerned because and then you say the problem and then you ask him like what can we do to help you right what can we do to help you feel better? What can we do to help you feel more supported? Whatever it is that you think your kid needs in that moment. Now, the problem solving conversation is something that seems really simple because it's basically, I can tell you what, they, what the steps are right now. It's basically describe your kid's feelings and needs and then you describe your feelings and needs or you describe the problem. And then together you think of possible solutions you write them down without evaluating it, and then you decide together um, how you're going to do this moving forward. So it is like, it seems super simple, but when it, the time comes to actually apply it, it isn't really, it isn't necessarily as simple as it seems, which is why I decided to have a webinar really focusing on this issue. Well, not this issue, on this tool, just to help parents um, with everything that's going on because like I'm using it now as an example for when your kid when you notice that your kid seems just a bit like overwhelmed with emotions but the same conversation these same steps you can use with toothbrushing you can use with tidying up I just used it a few weeks ago for my kid who was endlessly asking for snacks right um, and it's a tool that they will use for the rest of their life. And it's a tool that you might be using with them. You can use it with your partner, you can use it with your coworkers. It's really a useful skill that everyone can benefit from. So if you're interested in learning more about how to problem solve with your kids, then I highly suggest you sign up for my webinar. It's happening on Sunday at 10 a.m. Spain time. I will post the link in the video description for everyone, for anyone who wants to sign up. And yeah, I'll see you there. So that was, that's today. And again, tomorrow I'll be talking with Anna. She is the creator of the Checkpoint podcast. If you haven't listened to it yet, um, well, you'll hear more about it tomorrow and I'll share the link to the podcast tomorrow as well. I, I personally find it very soothing to hear them talk just because it's like, yeah, that's like, yeah, because it, it's two friends talking and it, they're going through what I'm going through. So yeah, we'll talk about it more tomorrow and I'll see you then. Have a nice Wednesday. Bye.